Minister, uh, we have clapped and saluted them because as frontline workers, they have been at the cold face of this war against COVID-19. And the vocation of nursing is having its greatest challenge, but it's also having its finest hour. When we as society have needed them the most, healthcare workers have been there for us in our time of needs. And the nursing profession has a long, illustrious history of caring, not only for their own profession, but also society as a whole. It also has seen the terrible impact in relation to COVID-19 has done to their own colleagues. Um, thousands upon thousands of healthcare workers across the world have died looking after uh, people such as, you know, as us, as anybody else that's viewing this. And they've taken a terrible toll, not only physically, but psychologically. Um, can you imagine being in an intensive unit ward uh, where all that PPE on and holding the hand of that person in their final moments? It's truly amazing, it's touching, um, and we're indebted for them people that were there at that moment and in their final moments of that person. And that person could have been any of our mothers or fathers or brothers or sisters. And it was, Minister, it was just over a year ago when nurses were compelled to go on strike in regards to paying conditions. Um, and nurses never should have to go on strike, never. Uh, but they went on strike for a number of reasons. And it wasn't just on their own profession, but it was about the kind of, I suppose, the aspects and the bigger picture of our health service and what direction it, it, is go it has gone. Um, and they were fighting for their profession, retention of staff, uh, paying conditions, uh, and all that goes with it. And, you know, this is, these are the substantial questions, what we kind of, we talk about. But the nursing profession itself, uh, last year, over 5,000 uh, Leaving Cert students uh, showed their first preference to study um, nursing and midwifery. So there's an oversubscription of um, wanting to go into nursing. Uh, but it's the end of that process, and that process when they get to being a nurse. That's the issue that we're trying to raise today. And I know many student nurses, because I've worked with a lot of student nurses and have a lot of really good friends, are nurses themselves, and they will tell you they love their job, really absolutely love their job, but they've, they're burnt out. They're burnt out by the, kind of the nature uh, and the way they are treated, particularly student nurses, um, when they come into the undergraduate um, years, they feel used, and even, even in the, uh, the words of the INO, they feel exploited in relation to what they have to do um, and what they have to do on wards and all that. And obviously, they do recognise that they were given the HSA, HCA rates in, um, in, in, in April and May, but that has been withdrawn uh, for no good reason, even though they're obviously doing the exact same work. Uh, and that needs to be, um, that needs to be reviewed in a, in a, in a substantial way. Um, and I think, I know the Minister has said about in relation to placement and education training. Of course, nurses are on the kind of the, the wards and so forth, and they are training. But there is, you know, they have to live as well. And 50 euros per week is pittance. And when you look at the bigger picture, you know, this country is a quite wealthy country. Um, and we should have nurses that qualify and feel, don't feel compelled to emigrate. Uh, there is an element that people want to kind of maybe go to other countries after they graduate, but there's a substantial amount of nurses that want to stay in this country, but feel they're so burnt out after four years, they just don't want to stay anymore. And you think about it, if them nurses, even 50% of them nurses stayed in this country, uh, there wouldn't be a shortage of nurses in this state. Um, and that's, you know, I mean, there's, there's a worldwide shortage, in fact, across the world in relation to nurses. So we have to, you know, um, look at that and why are student nurses, not only nurses, but actually doctors, they just leave the state after being trained and they want to stay here. You know, they really, really want to stay here for a compelled to leave. Uh, and I think after COVID is gone, which it will be gone eventually, I think we've got to look at deeply, deeply into why 
med the medical profession in this country, you know, want to emigrate after they train. And there's a, there's a legacy, Minister, in relation to what we have all experienced as a society, as a government. And I think the, leg the legacy and lessons, I think, in particular this issue, uh, in relation to student nurses, is, you know, uh, health should be performed well, uh, health, um, and the issue of, you know, the legacy of student nurses being about re re remuneration, uh, respect, and retain. And I think them three words, if we can, if we can use them, um, we can hold on to our nurses when, we, when, this, when this government and society needs them the most. Thank you.